Hello and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I will show you how to make this bead bangle. It's a Cellini spiral. I love these spirals so much because they look just amazing and they are uh, not hard to make at all. It's basically just a peyote spiral but you use different sizes of beads. Uh, you are changing the bead sizes as you go along. This technique is suitable even for beginners. Trust me, it's a lot easier than it looks. It's a very time-consuming technique, uh, but if you decide to make just a small bracelet like this one, it's not that much time-consuming. If you are wondering why it's called a Cellini spiral, actually some people call it the Cellini spiral, and they are right. That's how it should be pronounced. Uh, but the more established pronunciation in beat community is more likely to be Cellini spiral. The Cellini spiral was developed by seed bead masters Virginia Blacklock and Carol Perenut, who invented it and named it after Benvenuto Cellini, Italian goldsmith, sculptor, draftsman and artist who lived in the 16th century. Before we get started, I would like to ask you to subscribe to my channel and turn notifications on so you don't miss any new videos. It really helps my channel to grow. Also, feel free to check my Instagram where you can find a lot of content you are not gonna see here on YouTube. Uh, okay, so prepare a bead mat and beads. I'm going to use these 50 nos, it's Toho Round, color Higher Metallic Dark Amethyst. As always, you can find a list of all the products in the description of the video with links where you can buy it. Next, I'm going to use Toho Treasure Size 11 in two colors. This is Matte Mauve and this one is Inside Color Rainbow Crystal Salmon Lined. And I will also use some size 8. Uh, they are Toho Round size 8 in color Permanent Finish Galvanized Lavender and these 3mm fire polished glass beads. Uh, I was originally going to use just uh, the turquoise ones, but they didn't have enough in the store, so I'm going to alternate them with these purple ones. I will sew one turquoise and next time one purple. Uh, next we need the thread. I'm going to use a fire line of size uh, 0.12 mm in crystal color. Beading needle is John James of size 12. And scissors. Uh, one other thing I would like to point out is that in order to achieve the flexibility of beadwork, you must also have a section with small beads. Uh, this is the point where our beadwork will bend. Otherwise, the beadwork would be too stiff. Uh, also, keep adequate retention. Do not pull too much or sew too loosely. Just use a medium tension. Uh, my pattern is pretty simple. You can see it here right now. Uh, first, make two rows at a time. That is, pick up each bead twice. Uh, so, I'm picking up four 15 rows. One, two three and four, two dark purple, two salmon color beads, two lavender, two fire polished beads, uh, one purple and one turquoise, and two lavender, two salmon colored beads, and two dark purple beads. So, bring the beads down and uh, leave a tail long enough to weave the thread in. Uh, and I'm gonna pass through all the beads again. That's how we connect all the beads in a circle. You can also just tie a knot, but I don't like to do this because the knot would uh, block one of the bead holes. And I go all the way through the 50 nose. Through all of them. And uh, now I'm coming out of the last 50 no. And at this point we don't actually need a pattern anymore because a very simple but important rule applies here. The bead that I'm coming out of is gonna be the bead that I pick up. So I'm coming out of size 15. So I pick up another size 15. I skip the very next bead and go with my needle through the second bead. It's just a peyote stitch. Uh, 
I'm coming out of a dark purple bead, so I pick up another dark purple bead and I skip the very next bead and go through this salmon bead. And again the same, I'm coming out of a salmon bead, so I pick up a salmon bead and go through the lavender bead. Skip one fire polished and go through the next one. Pick up one purple fire polished bead and go through the lavender size 8 bead. Pick up size 8 bead and go through the salmon bead. Uh, now I'm at the end of the row and I need to step up. So I'm coming out uh, of 15-0 purple bead. So I pick up another 15-0. I skip the very next bead and I need to step up. This means go up through these two size 15 beads on a diagonal. This one is of my base row and the step up is through the first uh, bead that I picked up on the second round. Our first size 15 bead that we pick up uh, will be always our step up. And that's how I go to the beginning of the next round. Here you can already see how every other bead stands out from the line. Uh, I'm coming out of size 15, so I pick up size 15 and go through the bead that sticks out. And continue exactly the same way. As you can see, it's very repetitive. Maybe that's why I like to make these spirals when I watch movies, because I don't need to follow any printed pattern. Uh, I don't have to think about it very much. I just look at what bead I'm coming out of and I pick the same bead. It's it's very easy. And you're just gonna need to do that over and over. Uh, from time to time it is a good idea to check the pattern to see if it's correct. Uh, when sewing becomes routine it can sometimes happen that you accidentally pick up a bead that is ahead of you instead of the bead you are coming out of. Uh, if this happens to you it's best to rip out the part and do it again. So the sooner you find the mistake the better. I need to step up again, uh, so I pick up the last 15-0 seed bead, skip one and step up. Go through these two size 15 beads on a diagonal. As you can see, I am coming to the end of my thread, so I'm going to show you how to end this one and then put on a new one. I'm not cutting the old thread yet, and I thread a new piece of thread on my needle. I go with my needle through the same bead, I'm coming out uh, with my old thread. And I'm working it in reverse for a few stitches. Then I make a turn and just weave the thread in. If you go back and forth a few times and make several turns, you don't have to make any knots. Uh, but I like to tie some knots or for my own good feeling that it's secure. So I tie some knots. And cut the tail. And I also weave the tail of my old thread. I go through a couple of beads, tie some knots and cut the tail. And I can continue with my new thread. 
Now I have the length I want for my bracelet. I just try it on my hand if it's enough. It's better to measure it on the widest part of your hand because you need to roll the bangle on your hand. The Cellini spiral is a bit flexible so you can count on that a bit too. And now I will show you how to bring those two ends together. You need to stop sewing just after uh, the step up. You can see that my thread is coming out of this last 15 bead. And at that point these two ends will zip together. I line them up, uh, but first I weave my starting tail in. So I just uh, go through a couple of beads. Make some circles, make some knots and cut it. I'm back in the end of my Cellini spiral and I like to start connecting the ends uh, from the largest bead. So I go uh, with my needle to the largest bead, to, the, to this fire polished bead. Uh, I'm just gonna pass through the beads without adding new ones. So go through my last fire polish bead, the biggest bead. Now I'm coming out of the largest bead. I'm gonna pass through the fire polished bead uh, on the other edge to connect. And this fire polished bead should sit on top of the size 8 bead. So I just circle around those two beads to connect them properly. and back through the fire polished bead. Make sure that the beads are lining up. So I'm going uh, through the next fire polished bead. And this fire polished bead is going to sit on top of this size 8 bead. So again I circle them. and tied. And continue exactly the same way. So I go with my needle up through the size uh, 8 bead and this size 8 bead uh, will sit on top of this salmon size 11 bead. So I go down through this bead and again I'm going to make a circle and tied well. And continue up through the next uh, size 8 bead and make a circle again. Tight. Go through size 11 salmon bead and this size 11 salmon bead uh, will sit on top of this brown size 11 bead. So I go down with my needle and make a circle again. Yeah, and you can just continue the same way till the end. I will go all the way around, circle the beads together. And the edges are connected and we can weave the thread in. And finally cut the thread. I can simply roll it on my hand. Wow, it's really big and heavy, but I love it. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions, suggestions or anything else. 
I'd be happy if you show me your beadwork and tag me for example on Instagram. Don't be afraid to experiment, this type of bead spiral is very variable and always looks great. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and see you next time, bye!